The King's Dominion, today on Fixing the Money Thing. We need to be always conscious of what we're looking at, meaning that it's easy to take your eyes off the grace of God and begin to look at the problems as they unfold before you and actually step out of faith and into fear. With most families burdened in unsustainable levels of personal debt, most Americans believe there is no way to have financial freedom. However, author, pastor, and financial expert Gary Cassie believes most families can be completely out of debt in less than seven years. You must get out of debt. You've got to make right choices with your money right now. Gary and his wife Drenda are now on a crusade to share this information that changed their life so that you can not just survive, but prosper in today's economy. Your life can be totally transformed by an idea in the marketplace. This is Gary Cassie, Fixing the Money Thing. Hey, welcome to another edition of Fixing the Money Thing where pastors Gary and Drinda Cassie talking again about your money. Yes, we're talking about the king's dominion and worry, how worry affects our life, but God has dominion over that area in our life if we give it to him, right? Well, worry is simply wrong belief. It's belief that you have no dominion. There's no authority. There's no answer. And so, Dorinda, what we found is, is that the kingdom is king and dominion put together, those two words. Our king, the God of the universe, who made all things visible and invisible, has absolute dominion and authority. Yes. If we learn to walk in his dominion, there's no fear. How can there be fear when he has dominion over all things? Mm. And as we're learning Good today thought. that God has his dominion, his kingdom, and the Bible says he has given it to us. That's the amazing thing. We are sons and daughters in his kingdom. And so today on Fixing the Money Thing, we found out that the king's dominion also includes wealth, provision, because the king is not broke. He has plenty of it to go around. He'll help you in life. Today on Fixing the Money Thing, we're gonna talk about the dominion of the king in your life. Now, from the King's Dominion Package, today's message, Take No Thought for Tomorrow, on Fixing the Money Thing. Well, today's topic is Take No Thought for Tomorrow. That'd be a good topic to learn about, wouldn't it? And we need to do that. A lot of times they're tough for people. They need to know how to handle situations in life. And so Jesus said, Take No Thought for Tomorrow. But how do you do that? Because tomorrow's coming. Well, we're going to find out today how to handle that. 2 Timothy chapter 1 Verse number six, Paul is writing a letter to Timothy. Now, something interesting is happening in the world. Paul's in prison. Nero, who you've heard about, has him in prison. And there's persecution breaking out against the church. Timothy is pastoring the church in Ephesus. And so Paul is concerned about Timothy and is writing a letter to him. Considers, considers Timothy one of his sons, meaning he was born under his ministry. And so he writes this this uh, letter to him in verse number two of chapter one. He says, uh, to Timothy, my dear son, grace, mercy, and peace from God the Father and Christ Jesus our Lord. The first thing that he says is what? Grace. You know what? You need to have your eyes focused on grace. I don't care what you're going through today. If God was going to write you a letter, he would say, grace be unto you. My power, my ability is yours. Don't forget, Timothy, my grace is yours. Grace is yours. So he says, grace, mercy, and peace from God the Father to you. Verse 3, I thank God whom I serve as my forefathers did with a clear conscience. As night and day I constantly remember you in my prayers. Recalling your tears, I long to see you so that I may be filled with joy. I have been reminded of your sincere faith which first lived in your grandmother Lois and your mother Eunice, and I'm persuaded now lives in you also. For this reason, I remind you to fan into flame the gift of God, which is in you through the laying on of my hands. For God did not give us a spirit of timidity or fear, but a spirit of power, of love, and self-discipline. Now, Paul is reminding Timothy, you're putting him in remembrance of the grace of God. But now Timothy knows his mom was a Christian. She had faith. He knows his grandmother was of faith. He remembers the day that Paul laid hands on him. And now Paul says, I want to remind you, Timothy, times are tough. Hey, I want to remind you, grace, 
I want to remind you of that sincere faith that's been imparted to you. I want to remind you of the day I laid my hands on you. And I want to remind you that God has not given you a spirit of fear, but of love, power, and a sound mind or self-control. So this is God's word to you today. Now, we have to understand how this operates. Stir up the gift. I felt in my spirit as I was praying this week that we need to be always conscious of what we're looking at. Meaning that it's easy to take your eyes off the grace of God and begin to look at the problems as they unfold before you and actually step out of faith and into fear. God said to me, we need to make sure that we stay stirred up. He says, stir that up on the inside, stir it up. Put yourself in remembrance of where you come from, the God that saved you. Matthew chapter six, Jesus is teaching about life here. We wanna take a look at what he says. Some interesting facts and some lessons we can glean from this chapter. Matthew chapter six, verse number 25, Jesus says, therefore, I tell you, do not worry, or the King James says, take no thought, for tomorrow. Now, how many know that if I just said, hey, it's a sin to worry, that would solve the problem. That would not solve the problem, would it? You know what? Because you're worrying about something. You see, God is called the God of peace, not because you have goosebumps in church, but because he's the God of answers. What you got to find out is how to get those answers into your life. God is the God of peace. The Holy Spirit has been given unto you, the Bible says. The Greek word paraclete means one called alongside to help. The counselor, remember, speaking of Jesus, the counselor, mighty God, you need a counselor. The Holy Spirit's been given unto you. Jesus said when he left, before he left to his disciples, my peace I give unto you. What was that peace he was talking about? He was talking about the fact that he trusted and let, was led in his life, in his ministry by the Holy Spirit. My peace I'm going to leave with you. My peace is God himself with you. You'll not be left alone. God will never leave you, forsake you. My peace, you don't have to be afraid. You're not trying to walk this out yourself. My peace, I leave with you. So he's talking about, therefore, don't worry about your life, what you'll eat or drink or about your body, what you'll wear. Is not life more important than food and the body more important than clothes? This is a very important point. See, most people live their lives trying to pay their house payment. But what Jesus is saying is, no, that's not life. Paying for a car is not life. He said, there's life. The life is your purpose. Remember, Jesus said, I have food that you do not know of to do the will of my Father. See, he understood that life is not the things of life, but to do the will of God. So I always tell people, you know, one of the greatest questions we get as pastors is, what should I do with my life? Well, you need to find the will of God for your life. That's how you'll find contentment and fulfillment. I can't tell you what that is, but the Holy Spirit will lead you into your unique gifting, into your unique place of service. But that's what Jesus said. He said, that's the satisfying thing is to do the will of God. Amen. So he says not to worry. Okay, you can't just say not to worry. You have to tell people how not to worry. So if you're hungry, I can't say, you know, well, bless you. Be in peace. Well, you're not, you're not going to be in peace. Do you eat something, you know? So we have to figure out how this thing operates. How do I get in peace? How do I not worry? Let's find out. So he goes on and says, all right, look at the birds of the year, verse 26. They don't sow or reap or store away in barns. They don't, they don't design and manage worm farms for themselves. They don't take it upon themselves the care of life. They simply gather. God feeds them. They just simply have to gather their provision when they're hungry. And going on down, he says, and why do you worry about clothes? Have you ever seen a flower? Flowers are pretty, smell good. And they didn't do that. God made them. So he goes on and says, oh, ye of little faith. So do not worry saying, verse 31, what shall we eat? What shall we drink or what shall we wear? For the unbeliever runs after all these things. And this is the important phrase. And your heavenly father knows that you need them. All right, so people ask us all the time, well, if God knows that, why doesn't he do it? Why can't he do anything he wants to do? Well, I won't cover that today. You need to get our Now Revolution CD set. It talks about the legality that Adam had the legality in the earth realm, but he gave it away. So God can't just move in the earth and do what he wants to do. He has to go through the legal guardian of the earth. Man was placed in charge of the earth. And so he has to work through men and women. He can't just do what he wants to do because he already gave the legality of the earth to men and women. All right, so he says this, God knows what you have need of, but seek first his kingdom and his righteousness 
and all these things will be given to you as well. So what's he saying? We need to define our terms here. What's he saying? Your answer is God, okay, he says not to worry. He understands what's going on. God already knows what your problem is. He understands what you have need of, but seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added to you. So we need to define this term. Seek first the what? Kingdom. kingdom. What is the kingdom? The kingdom is from two words, king and dominion. So we want to learn how the kingdom or the king's dominion or authority flows into the earth realm. If we can learn how the king's dominion or the kingdom of the king's dominion flows in the earth realm and then learn to discern what is right in the kingdom or legal in the king's dominion, then all of these things shall be added to us. More of today's message in a moment. Today, from Fixing the Money Thing, resources to teach you kingdom authority and gain the courage to use that authority in your life. The King's Dominion Package is a two-part series of teachings designed to teach you how to use God's authority to fix any situation and give you the courage to win in life. Part one is Gary's newest three CD series, Fear Not, Your Answers Are in the Kingdom. You will learn that God has all the authority you need. You just need to learn how to tap into it. We want to learn how the kingdom or the king's dominion or authority flows into the earth realm. In Take No Thought for Tomorrow, Gary shows you how God wants to be involved in your daily life and how to live stress-free. God is called the God of peace, not because you have goosebumps in church, but because he's the God of anger. In Why Are You So Afraid? You'll see that it's all about the difference between fear and reality. How many know there is no peace without someone that knows how to operate in dominion? On disc three, Deliver Us From Evil, it's all about exercising the kingdom authority God has already provided. When we feel like we're subject and have no control or authority over circumstances, then we become afraid. Call, write, or visit GaryCassie.com to order these powerful resources. Part two of the King's Dominion Package is an inspiring two CD series by Gary entitled Courage Unleashed. I always say during it takes more courage than faith to step up against circumstances and speak to them and move against them. That's exactly what God has called us to do. If you want to win in life and fulfill your God-given purpose, you'll need courage. The only thing that can stop you is fear. So you'll need the ability to press through despite the circumstances. Both Fear Not and Courage Unleashed are yours for only $29 in support of Faith Life Ministries. Call 888-391-LIFE. That's 888-391-5433. Go to GaryCassie.com or write to Faith Life Now, P.O. Box 779, New Albany, Ohio, 43054 to order. Five CDs of teaching, sure to move you to action and help you fix your money thing. Call, write, or visit GaryCassie.com now. Let's return for more of today's message, Take No Thought for Tomorrow, on Fixing the Money Thing. Now, we can't really kind of travel through this topic without at least bouncing off Mark 11. Your Bible should fall open to Mark 11, because this is probably one of the most powerful illustrations and teachings that Jesus taught about how the kingdom operates in the earth. Now, remember, Jesus spoke to a tree and it died. This was not normal. Peter was astonished by this. Walking by that tree, he brought it up to Jesus and said, look, the tree you spoke to died. And Jesus said in verse 22, have faith in God. Or you could say it this way, have faith in the kingdom. Or you could say the authority of the king. Have faith in how the kingdom operates or how God's authority operates. I tell you the truth, if anyone, and you're in anyone, says to this mountain, go throw yourself into the sea and does not doubt in his heart, but believes that what he says, what does a king do when he's seated? He decrees. He decrees. You see, you don't have to worry about backing up what you speak forth on God's behalf because God does that. You can't make it happen. But heaven waits upon you to decree it. All right, now, so he says, a man that does not doubt in his heart, but believes that what he says will happen, it will be done for him. Say, done for him. See, so you can't do it. You can't bring Lazarus out of the tomb. You can't 
call someone to be healed, but you can release the authority of the kingdom, and heaven waits upon you to do that. The Bible says whatever you loose, heaven backs up. What you bind, heaven backs up. And so he says if a man believes or agrees with heaven, comes into agreement or alignment with the king's dominion, then as he speaks forth the king's dominion in the earth realm, heaven backs it up. He can't do it, but heaven can. In fact, the Bible says all angels are ministering spirits sent on behalf of us who inherit salvation. They will enforce, heaven enforces what you release. All right? Are you getting this? Now, this scripture also talks about mountains. I think it's interesting how Jesus used the term, if anyone speaks to a mountain. When's the last time you saw a mountain be picked up and thrown into the sea? And that's a pretty impossible illustration, isn't it? Kind of like, what? I think Jesus did that to make a point that this is impossible. This doesn't make sense. This is out of the ordinary, but all things are possible to you guys. You understand that with the king's dominion, all things fall under his authority, and this is possible. He's making a point that even though it's impossible, it's possible. In your life today, you may be facing something impossible, but it's possible. See, you need to understand the, you need to understand the authority of the kingdom, that the king has dominion over all things. And if you'll find out what's legal in his kingdom or what's right, then you can step into that authority that he's given you the keys and release it. Now, you can't do something outside of what's right. You know, you can't curse something that God doesn't want to be cursed. And, you know, God's not going to back up your will. He's going to back up his will. 1 John 5, 14, this is our confidence. If we ask anything according to the king's will, we know that he hears it or he takes the case. If we know he takes the case, we know we have those things we've asked of him. So you can't invent your will in situations, you simply have to know what God's will is, and then you bring it to bear in that situation. And that's pretty easy to find out. You can find it out in the Word of God. You can pray in the Spirit and get direction. All right, so impossible things. God said, stir things up. Told Timothy, Timothy, stir it up. It's easy in tough times to want to back up, play it safe, and lose vision and zeal. No, Timothy, you have not been given the spirit of fear, but of power. You've been given the grace of the king's kingdom, of his dominion. And he is the highest of all authorities in all creation. And so by that name, by his authority, Timothy, don't you back down. Don't you interpret, interpret your position, your future based on what you see. For God is the authority that dictates and tells you what is possible. And he says all things are possible to those that believe. You know, when we step out there, we've got to make sure we keep ourselves stirred up because if we take our eyes off of the Word of God, then we find ourselves getting blurry and confused, and we begin to play it safe. We lose traction. And God reminded me this week, listen, tell the people, and me included, listen, do not back down and do not begin to, you know, play it safe. Find out what the will of the Lord is and pursue that in all grace and courage. So, you know, God, he just keeps, he keeps taking you places that you've never been before, and you really have to learn how to walk with him because, woo, you can get yourself out there sometimes, you know? And so we did the provision conference in uh, 2010, and how many were here when the thunder went off? Anyone remember that? Well, we did this conference. I'll, I'll play the clip here for, in a minute. But we did this conference, and this most amazing thing happened in the conference. It was not raining. There was just sunshine. As we, as we started the meeting, and this is what happened at the meeting. Go ahead and play that. In my Bible, in a very difficult day, I had a dream one night. I wrote the dream in the front of my Bible because this is what the dream was. I was standing on a hill with a sword in my hand. Below me was an entire army with their swords raised The word of the Lord, a voice in my dream says this. Don't underestimate yourself, Gary. And in that dream, I took my sword and I began to scream the word Thor, T-H-O-R, Thor! And I began to run down the hillside towards this army by myself with my sword extended. And I thought, I, I, we have some people in the church that understand languages. I said, what is, the, what is that all about? What is the word Thor? And, he said, it's a son of thunder. It's about thunder. Don't underestimate yourself. When the enemy sees you coming, Gary, it sounds like 
thunder. I wrote that. Is that really thunder or is that you guys? That was the only thunderclap of that entire day. We went outside after that thunderclap, and there was one little cloud above our building. And so you say, well, is that all about? I know what it was about. It was like this coin. He's saying, hey, I got your back. It's all right. Keep moving forward. See, Paul put Timothy in remembrance. See, God wants you to remember. He's going to put you in remembrance. Wait a minute. You're not to be afraid. I'm not giving you a spirit of weakness, spirit of fear. I've given you a spirit of the kingdom, the king's dominion. All things are possible. You see, it doesn't matter where you're at today. It doesn't matter if you've blown it, how big you've blown it. The point is, if you're part of the kingdom or the king's dominion, then you have access to the entire kingdom estate. You have all things that pertain to life, 2 Peter 1.3 says. And though you can cry and beg all you want to about your problems, God knows all about it. You know all about it. What we want to remind ourselves today is we have not been given that spirit of fear. But as Paul wrote that letter to Timothy, grace be unto you, Timothy. Grace be unto you, Timothy. You can step into that destiny God has for you by his grace, even though Nero is ranting and raving, there's persecution going on. Don't you draw back in fear. You step right in there by faith, by grace, get the job done. You see, as we understand the king's dominion that Jesus gave us that authority and that we are to bind and loose, then we know the Lord's prayer sounds a whole lot different than how we've rehearsed it growing up. Wait a minute, your kingdom come, your dominion come, Father, in the name of Jesus. I release heaven into this situation. I release what is right in heaven into the earth now in Jesus. Now, I release that. Heaven backs you up. You see, your future is really defined by you. The keys of the kingdom are in your possession. You have no need to beg. You simply need to learn, as Matthew 6 said, do not worry. How do we do that? You need to learn or seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, meaning you need to learn how the kingdom operates, the king's dominion flows into the earth realm. When you learn how that operates, guess what? You're gonna have what heaven has in it in your life on the earth. And God delights in seeing that in your life because people see him in you. Like my kids have my name, you bear his name as they see you in life. They see something different about you, and that draws people to God. Amen? To invite Gary to speak at your next event, contact him at GaryCassie.com. Today, from Fixing the Money Thing, resources to teach you kingdom authority and gain the courage to use that authority in your life. The King's Dominion Package is a two-part series of teachings designed to teach you how to use God's authority to fix any situation and give you the courage to win in life. Part one is Gary's newest three CD series, Fear Not, Your Answers Are in the Kingdom. You will learn that God has all the authority you need. You just need to learn how to tap into it. We want to learn how the kingdom or the king's dominion or authority flows into the earth realm. In Take No Thought for Tomorrow, Gary shows you how God wants to be involved in your daily life and how to live stress-free. God is called the God of peace, not because you have goosebumps in church, but because he's the God of answers. In Why Are You So Afraid? You'll see that it's all about the difference between fear and reality. How many know there is no peace without someone that knows how to operate in dominion? On disc three, Deliver Us From Evil, it's all about exercising the kingdom authority God has already provided. When we feel like we're subject and have no control or authority over circumstances, then we become afraid. Call, write, or visit GaryCassie.com to order these powerful resources. Part two of the King's Dominion Package is an inspiring two CD series by Gary entitled Courage Unleashed. I always say during it takes more courage than faith 
to step up against circumstances and speak to them and move against them. That's exactly what God has called us to do. If you want to win in life and fulfill your God-given purpose, you'll need courage. The only thing that can stop you is fear. So you'll need the ability to press through despite the circumstances. Both Fear Not and Courage Unleashed are yours for only $29 in support of Faith Life Ministries. Call 888-391-LIFE. That's 888-391-5433. Go to GaryCasey.com or write to Faith Life Now, P.O. Box 779, New Albany, Ohio, 43054 to order. Five CDs of teaching, sure to move you to action and help you fix your money thing. Call, write, or visit GaryCasey.com now. With more, Gary and Drenda Casey. Excellent teaching. Take no thought. How do we do that? Well, obviously, you're picking thoughts up all the time. But how can you take no thought? It implies a negative thought, a worried thought. Or a second thought. I think second of it like, uh, you know, go back and revisit something another time. A second guess or, you yeah. know, kind of. Unless you have a thought to counter it, right? So Jesus said, take no thought for tomorrow as we've been teaching. And that doesn't make sense unless you have an answer. He gave the answer as we, as we have already discussed, and that is the kingdom, the king's dominion. And he says, you have to seek first the kingdom or the king's dominion and his righteousness, learning what is right. Once you learn what the king says is right or legal and the degree or influence of his dominion, then you have access to your answers. Of course, All once things. you learn that you are of the kingdom, you know, the kingdom's not out here trying to get somewhere. Most Christians think the kingdom's like the Calvary coming on the horizon, you know, but they have to realize the kingdom is been given to them. It's Luke in chapter us. Yes. Yeah. 1720 says the kingdom of God does not come by observation for it is in us. We already have all things that pertain to life. Second Peter 1, 3. But learning how to actually release the king's dominion, his authority in our life, mm -hmm. is really what Jesus was demonstrating throughout his entire ministry. He would always say, let me tell you a truth. Let me demonstrate a law. Let me show you how this works. And he was teaching. And that's why it's important that you get the information we're talking about, not because it's from us, but because we're trying to help people understand what we learned ourselves about the King's Dominion. Go to GaryGacy.com or go to the screen right now and call that number, but consider getting this information because I'll tell you firsthand, we have already tested it and found it to be so. I trust you'll do that and it'll bless your life. We'll see you next time right here on Fixing the Money Thing. Fixing the Money Thing is brought to you by the Ford Financial Group and Lindsay Honda and Acura of Columbus. Tune in each Friday at 5.30 p.m. for Drenda. Connect with special guests, discover life-changing topics, and learn to live life out loud. It's more than just television. It's Drenda. Call or visit GaryCasey.com and receive a free gift today. On the first CD from the Now Revolution, Gary shares his family story and part of the foundational teaching that got them out of debt and into the prosperity God wants us all to. Come experience Faith Life Church for yourself and become part of a close-knit gathering of people who want something more. Located on the east side of Columbus, just 10 minutes from Easton off of 161. Come home and experience new life at Faith Life. Partner with Gary. Check out GaryCasey.com for more info. Thanks for watching. Fixing the Money Thing is brought to you by the partners and friends of Faith Life Now.